If you are like me, where you're just the average person trying to make creative content on YouTube and you don't have the equipment to do that, I think this video might be for you because I was exactly at that point a few months ago. I'm going to get into how I made the switch in an affordable and sustainable way and how you can too. Welcome back to the channel, or if you're new here, thank you for clicking. My name is Nicole, and today I'm pretty much just gonna rant about how I'm so done filming YouTube videos on my iPhone. So since starting my YouTube channel a few months back, I have filmed 10 videos all on my, yes, get this, iPhone XR. You heard me right, people. That was released in September 2018. I am living in the past so bad right now. Part of the reason is because I try to live a sustainable lifestyle where I buy what I need when I need it. I like to use things until I can't anymore. And I also like to buy refurbished and used. Also the way like iPhones and cell phones in general are made is so unethical and so environmentally unfriendly in terms of the materials that they mine and it's just a whole thing. I speak about this a little bit in a previous video, but um, I'm not gonna go down that tangent right now. So again, I'm just gonna review what I was using. My iPhone XR, I also got a used uh, MV88 Shure USB microphone that plugs right into your uh, iPhone, which I'm using right now to record this. And then also I would just use like a selfie stick or a ring light to hold the camera. And then the editing software that I use on my computer is Adobe Premiere Pro and I, I use Windows 10. And the only other piece of equipment I had was an ancient relic from times past, the Panasonic Lumix G DMC GF3. That's what this is, okay? This is like over 10 years old. It actually still shoots great, surprisingly, but for video, um, it just, it just, no, it was better for me to shoot on my iPhone XR. So that's when you know it's bad. A lot of YouTubers or content creators, they have the latest model of the iPhone. They are able to shoot in 4K with the iPhone. If you already have an iPhone that can shoot in 4K, do it. Like, that's great. Basically, the final straw was last week, I uploaded a video called Embracing Winter, which was a lot of outdoor shots. Somehow it uploaded in 720 quality on YouTube, even though I didn't change anything on Adobe Premiere, the way I film it on the iPhone or uploading it to YouTube, it's still a mystery. It's probably something very simple that I have no idea about. Um, but I was just like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done with this. This is it. That's what happens. I. I, I deal with things for a very long time and then I finally can't take it anymore. And then I do something drastic. In this case, it was a good drastic choice because I start researching affordable cameras that can shoot in 4K and the Panasonic Lumix G7 pops up. Yes, another Panasonic. Apparently once you like get a Panasonic camera, you literally like can't leave. It's like a cult, like they don't let you leave. <laughs> a lot of content creators and YouTubers were recommending this even now, even though it's a few years old, now that it's 2021. So I was looking into it and I thought, let me just look on Facebook Marketplace, even though I doubt it's gonna be on there because it's, what's what are the chances? Let me tell you, the chances for your girl that day were very good because <laughs> just the night before, someone 30 minutes away from me had added a Panasonic Lumix G7 on sale on Facebook Marketplace. And so I jumped on that and literally bought it that day. I was able to negotiate it down to like $430 US dollars. Also, I decided to go with that because I already had these lenses from my old Panasonic, which this was just the, the 14 to 42 millimeter, which is the same that comes with the standard kit lens for the Lumix G7. But then I also have the 45 to 200. Even though these are old lenses, I can still use them with this new body. And if I ever go to sell the body of the old camera, um, I could probably, I don't know, get like 75 to 100. I haven't priced it out yet, but basically in my mind, I was like, wow, I'm getting a 4K camera for 
basically $400, if not maybe less, depending on what gear I already have that I can sell or trade in. There are ways to do this in an affordable, sustainable way. You know, I understand a lot of people, you're working on a budget and it's hard to afford, you know, new gear. But if you find it used, if you find it refurbished, if you're able to sell other things or sell other gear in place of it, um, th there's always ways to create new opportunities for yourself to better yourself and, and what you want to create and what you wanna put out there. I highly recommend just doing a lot of research, seeing what fits for you, what works for you. If you have an iPhone that shoots the way you like, then keep using it, that's fine, you know? But if you're like me and you're getting a little stir crazy about it, then it might it might be time to look for other alternatives. Again, I, I'm still testing out the Lumix G7, so I'll have a better idea of it later down the road, but I gotta tell you, I'm already just so happy to not be filming on my iPhone. <laughs> and now I just kind of wanna get some shots, get some video, show you a little bit of what this camera can do from a complete novice who has no idea what they're doing. That sounds great, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, so here is your standard obligatory, I got a new camera montage. <laughs> So this is what the Lumix G7 looks like with the standard kit lens on it. And guys, I know I'm outdated, but you have to understand the fact that this thing has a forward facing camera makes my life so much easier. Like I feel like I'm living in luxury. <laughs> so it's very light and compact and the grip is very easy to hold, which is great. I ended up getting the SanDisk Extreme Plus memory card because according to content creators and the random guy at Best Buy, it's great for shooting in 4K. So thank you, random guy at Best Buy. So I'm gonna show you some 4K footage I got, but before I do that, here's a very easy beginner mode that I shot with. You're gonna toggle over to like the movie mode. Then you're gonna have this on AFS slash AFF. I don't know, someone online said it's easy for beginners. <laughs> and then exposure mode I set to uh, you know, program, natural. Go down to this drop down menu and make sure it's on 4K 24 frames per second. And then go back into that drop down menu, struggle around a little bit until you get to uh, AF mode, which I found out of all of these different options, tracking was the best for vlogging, facial recognition, focusing. Again, this is just a very simple beginner mode. So all of the shots I'm about to show you were filmed in the mode I just discussed and also with the standard kit lens. And for this shot, the lens is zoomed all the way out. I am capturing my daily ritual of trying to win over Sugar the Pony with carrots, an unsuccessful venture thus far. So now I'm running up to the camera like a goon, trying to test out the autofocus and lo and behold, it actually isn't too bad. Here's the same angle and everything is set to the same mode. This is just with the lens zoomed in all the way. And Sugar's like, you got more carrots? No? Well, then be gone, wench. And then I do another run to the camera, somehow thinking that it would possibly be able to focus with it zoomed in all the way. <laughs> so actually, this is a really good test to see what the audio sounds like. I am just going to walk and try to see how steady this is. Again, I'm using the standard kit lens right now and I literally just have this on a tripod. Let's just see what this looks like. Do a little test, see how steady this is. Oh my God, I cannot walk in the snow. Oh, this is a bumpy ride, guys, this is bumpy. Okay, I think, I think it's, it's fairly fast to latch on to the face and focus in, but again, anything is better compared to what I had before. So here are just some more random shots in the same 4K mode that I've captured over the past like week and a half of having this camera. These are obviously over the course of different days. And yeah, so far I really am liking it overall. I'm also going to show you some slow-mo shots, and for that I kept it on movie, film mode thing. You're gonna go up to exposure, and you're gonna set it on manual, and then go to the drop-down menu, make sure this is on 1080. And then make sure your shutter speed or whatever it is, is on 125. 
So if you film in the mode I just showed you, you can achieve this effect while editing. I edit in Adobe Premiere Pro and I set the speed slash duration to 50% for all of these clips. So I wanted to incorporate some low light indoor shots as examples. I was pleasantly surprised with how these turned out. And this is pretty much the lowest light I've gotten the chance to experiment with. I have not really shot at night yet, so I don't know how that's gonna go. I haven't really had the chance to dive into taking too many photos, so I've literally just been setting it to like this program mode thing, I don't know. Then if you hit the drop down menu, just, you know, I have it at 1080, 60p. I don't know guys, I have yet to really experiment with photography on this thing. So trust me, it took everything I had in me to not edit these photos, but I wanted to leave them untouched so that it was an accurate portrayal of, you know, the shots that this camera can get with no edits done. And again, I, I'm pleasantly surprised all things considered. Well, thank you for coming along with me on that little test. Um, I have a lot to learn, a lot to figure out with this camera, but um, this is step one of the journey. So I will definitely keep you guys updated and um, most likely all of my content from now on, fingers crossed, unless something ridiculous goes wrong and I like somehow, you know, can't figure out modern technology, which is a very real possibility. This is how I will be filming all of my YouTube content from now on. So stick around for the next video. I will see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. In an effort to keep the content of Conjure Jewelry as original and homegrown as possible, some of my amazing artist friends lent their talents on this endeavor. The logo was hand-drawn by a visual artist, most of the background music you will hear in these videos was written and recorded by musicians, and all of these artists' links are in the description, so please check them out. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.